Hi guys, welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill and today I'm going to talk a bit to you about business acumen. Being uh, business smart or savvy, whatever you want to call it. Now, did I get ripped off or did I make a massive cock up? Now that's the question in today's video and we're going to have a little discussion about it. I'm going to show you the item in question, I'm going to explain to you exactly what's going on, what I've done to deal with it and maybe look at a few ways on how we can avoid it. So should we get started? Um, as you know I've been listing quite a lot of the last week or two basically trying to boost my eBay sales up and um, just picking pieces at random from the shop. Now I listed a selection of vases, vases, whatever you want to call them, all mid-century, Remanike or Remaki, um, Alistair Fos, and you get the point. They're all mid-century Scandinavian vases. And anyway, I took an offer on one vase, I added up for £30, I took an offer at £24. Now, I messed up originally, I sent the wrong vase. That was my own stupidity. I sent the wrong vase because I, I code my vase with numbers. And don't ask me how, must have been in the rush of doing everything and overdoing it. I picked up the wrong code and put it in center off. Anyway, she was refunded for that and it came back to me. And I had that one back and I resent her the vase that she'd purchased. As soon as the vase arrived, I have an eBay dispute opened up. Vase arrived damaged. Now I'm thinking, okay, if it's got damage in the post, I have probably one or two damaged items a year, if that, out of hundreds and hundreds of pieces. It's very rare for me to have damage. If you watched my packing video this week, you'll see I can throw my parcels around, they don't get damaged. So I instantly thought, okay, well you can have a refund. But then I look at the photos, and all it is is this tiniest of minuscule chip on the rim. Now that's not damaged in transit. So the question is then, was it damaged in the shop and I've missed it? Or have they damaged it getting it out of the packaging? Or, and it's a nasty or, did they have one of these vases already with damage on it? I'm saying damage, it's the tiniest of chip in the world. Um, and they wanted a perfect one and then they swapped with the old. Because there are eBay scams out there and this is one of the known scams. If you have an item that's damaged, if it's readily available, you go online, buy another one. Oh, that one's come, swap it around. Yours is damaged, sorry, I'll have my money back. That is a big thing for eBay, we all know that. So, I'm including the photographs now. So, I'll cut in the photos now. If you have a look at those, you can see how minor the damage was. So now you've looked at the photographs, um, you can see that wasn't damaged in shipping. So that takes that out of there because if it damaged in shipping, it'd have been cracked, it'd have been smashed, it'd have been in pieces. You wouldn't have that tiniest of chip on there. So there's left two options, or three options then. They've damaged again out the package, they've swapped an item for one they've had, or it was damaged when I had it and I've missed the damage. But did you look at the photographs? my photographs of the item that was listed. There was a few smudges where I'd handled the bars at the back, but there was no chips and you could see 97% of the rim. But either way, there's no way whatsoever I can prove whether that's my vase or whether it's a vase that's been swapped. Whether they damaged it on packaging it or whether it got damaged in the post is irrelevant. Um, eBay, if they took the claim to eBay, well they didn't expect, that they said it's the right damage and I instantly give a refund. Um, but if they took that to eBay, eBay would then look at it and say, right, it arrived to them, it's got a chip on it, end of, it doesn't matter whether they've done it, you've done it, post office done it, it doesn't matter. eBay then say, money back. And they do. And that is absolutely fine, I've got no problem with that. If somebody buys something off me and I say it's perfect and it gets in, it's not, then I've got no problem giving them the money back. 
that is one of the reasons I go over every item so closely I make sure my descriptions are accurate um, I don't send stuff with a chip or a crack or a flaw or a hairline or anything because I know it's just gonna cost me money so that's a waste of time so I make sure my descriptions are accurate now if I sent that with a chip would mean that one it was on in the shop here with a chip and I don't sell nothing damaged in the shop I've gone through all these vases here uh, when I put them out and nothing is chipped I don't sell damaged um, or if I have the odd damaged item I make sure it's written on the tags that it's damaged but it's so collectible that I'd still offer it out but a modern glass vase I wouldn't sell with a chip so taking that aside sorry guys taking that aside then if I wouldn't have had it in the shop have I damaged it in the photographing and the packing process? Well, the photographs are mint. And from that photographing station, I instantly wrap it in bubble and pack it away. So, I'm not saying I didn't miss the chip. Unlikely for myself, but it does happen. So, um, that then leaves. They may have chipped it, caught it with a ring or something when they took it and unpacked it. It's possible. They could have dropped it, possible, but it would have probably smashed, um, or they could have swapped it, possible again, that can't be proved. Now, there's no point arguing, as I've already said, so personally, I just hit the refund button straight away. Now, my options were, I could have had it returned, but what is the point in having it returned? I then got to pay another £7 postage to have it back. I got to refund them everything. I've already paid a certain amount for the bars. So, am I going to then coop my money back by selling it as a chipped vase? And the answer is no. Because the second you sell something with a chip in this uh, modern glass vase, people don't want to know. They want the perfect example because there's so many available. Supply and demand. If the demand isn't as great as the supply, the price comes down. And they want the perfect ones. So, there was no point in me asking for it back. Now, the only reason I could think of to have it back would be basically um, if it is a scam it stops somebody else getting scammed by then buying another one of these vases and, and showing my vase or the other vase and saying look it's chipped but that's if I believe it was a scam now personally I like to believe the best in people and I think well okay maybe I missed it purely because I would rather think okay I messed up cost me a bit of money I've learned a lesson I'll be more careful next time than to think I got scammed it hurts less you know, when you, um, well, let me put it this way. If they'd emailed me and said it's been chipped and I'm there, no, 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 it wasn't chipped when I had it, that's a load of rubbish. And we ended up arguing back and forth and my stomach's up in knots and I get angry. And then they go, oh, I'm going to eBay. eBay then go, well, I'm sorry, there's their money back. you got a strike against you for not working with your buyers, your own fault. And then all of a sudden, you're like, do you know, I can't stand eBay, I want to check it in. That's what's going to happen. That's the outcome because you're going to be so angry that they've sided with them. And let's be honest, it could have been a mistake by me. And that's the way I like to think of it. Um, there's obviously ways of avoiding that. Obviously, you really inspect the items. Um, I have a gentleman that comes in the shop and he uses the eBay shipping program, especially for overseas. So they ship it to an item that then inspect the item, repack it and then ship it out themselves. And he had a dispute on an item and they said, well, no, we know we've already inspected your piece. So yours, your money, it's not a problem. You won't have a negative feedback. I don't know if they do that in the UK, but I don't use the shipping program. So anyway, um, losing my point, uh, my, my train of thought there a little, sorry, people coming in. Um, if you spend all your time arguing with these customers, right, you're going to end up with negative feedback, you're going to end up with a bad reputation, people are not going to want to buy off you, they're really not. I lost 30 quid, £24 plus postage, do you know what, it's gone, move on to the next one. The energy and the effort I put into arguing over that £24 or £30 defence, literally versus just moving on to the next item. Now I could have, another option I could have done I suppose is say, I'll give you a partial refund to uh, compensate you for the small chip. But they were adamant they wanted a full refund and return the item. They didn't want a partial. Um, so it is what it is. I didn't want to pay the return postage. Uh, for me, 
once I bought an item and sold it, I want to move on to the next one. If I start arguing with customers and things, it just takes the fun out of it. For 30 quid, it's just not worth it. It really isn't, guys. So, um, I did mention earlier tonight, there are ways to avoid it. Um, now, one of the ways is to buy stuff that isn't mass-produced. So, for example, you know Roald Dalton figurines are produced by the thousands. Somebody may have a Roald Dalton figurine in the house or bought her at a car boot sale, because it happens, with a head off. They go online, they buy the same one, come back, up oh, yours come with a head off. Thank you very much, I'll my money back, I've now got a perfect piece. And in some aspects, you should have it returned because then they can't do it again. Um, but at the same time, it's not my job to police and pay to make sure they can, there are honest people out there. I try and look on the best side of people, I really do. But if you deal in unusual items, you know, handmade items or really old, genuine antiques, things like that, things that are not so readily available and not always identical to what you got, then it's harder for them to do that type of scam. Remember, I'm not saying I got scammed. I don't know either way, it could be my mistake. I'm just saying this is a scam that's out there. Uh, but business, business ethics, just give them a refund and move on. Some people say use a security marker. Uh, and when it comes back, if it's not your item, um, then you can kick off. But you don't get nowhere anyway. I've tried that with eBay. I used to use a invisible or infrared or you'd need black light to see the marker. And I'd sign every piece. And then it'd come back, you'd look at it, well hang on, that's not a piece I've signed with my marker. And eBay still didn't care. They say, well maybe you wiped off or whatever. It doesn't work. Sometimes I'll say to customers, oh well, send it back if it really just doesn't seem right. I'll say send it back and um, you know, as long as it match my uh, security marks on there, I will uh, give you a refund. And then you don't hear from them again. But when this lady clearly had a vase with a chip on there, what is the point in me having it back? Because she's going to send me the chip vase back either way, so it's just no point. So what I'm trying to say is, in a long-winded way, we all mess up. Just try and look on um, the more positive side of it. Take into account you're going to have some scams, you can have some breakages, you can have some mistakes over the year and factor that into your costs because that's all you can do. Just don't let it get you down. Stay positive and just move on to the next deal guys because there are many many more deals to come. Just don't let it get you sour. Guys thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. It cost me 30 quid. Bye for now.